All right, so uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about recoil management and then uh, being able to watch your splash when you're shooting. Uh, a couple of new shooters have asked me, you know, they're, they're looking to get into precision rifle competitions and uh, somebody was shocked when they learned that we can spot our splash right. through the scope as we're shooting on a stage. So yeah. can you talk me through that a little bit? Absolutely. And, and okay, so we have recoil management and then some, some folks kind of take that into the like re recoil mitigation or elimination. And you really can't mitigate, you can't eliminate recoil, you, but you can manage it. So we're set up here on, uh, you know, not in the prone, but I'm gonna address the rifle in the same way. I attach it to my collarbone, and I'm, you know, I don't free recoil it, which might actually give me a steadier position, like a, a much steadier sure. look at the target. Sure. But my goal is I want to try to see splash or even see trace. We actually see the bullet, Watching the vapor it. trail going down range. Right. That's my goal with a competition gun. With mm. my lighter rifles or the heavier recoiling rifles. I really just want to see my bullet connect with the target or see it actually hit the dirt. Or, right. You know, I just want to see my target effects. Okay. I feel that's kind of a responsibility of mine as a hunter. And, you know, just from my background, um, you just have to be responsible for where that bullet went. Absolutely. So, <clears throat> you know, I'm going to square up to the rifle like I would in the prone. I'm going to attach it to my collarbone. Um, and that really helps because I'm a big bodied guy, so it really helps in my ability to to manage the recoil or direct it, direct the direction of it so that I can actually still see what's going on, mm -hmm. right? And it gets exponentially harder as you get lighter rifles or, or heavier recoiling rifles. And sure. what we're going to do is we're going to go through all of them. I've got a few, a few rounds and we're going to get some recording of what it looks like through... Okay. And what cartridge is this? This is a six Creedmoor. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's what I shoot, so yep. I'm familiar yep. with that one. Okay. Yep. And um, so again, it's one of those things where when I get behind the rifle, I want to be really square to it. And I'm going to attach the rifle right on my collarbone, right underneath my dominant eye. Sure. So I'm basically, if you, I'm, I'm in this position here, and if you took this and made it look like the prone, it would, it would change okay right the way yeah. I address the rifle so and what I'm gonna do with my my left hand is I'm gonna kind of push down on it not up here on the on the scope because you can actually deflect where you see where right. the scope is. yeah so I'm just gonna kind of get up in here I'm gonna push down on the rifle I'm gonna sink it down into the bag and the first thing I'm gonna do is push push the rifle up into the bag mm -hmm. okay and if I can be stable there, I'm gonna go ahead and go with it. If not, you know, if it's super unsteady, unsteady I'm gonna kind of back up away from the rifle until it stops wobbling, until my wobble zone is, is acceptable. And then what I'm doing is I'm more trying to catch the rifle, if that makes any, like you're catching a, a football pass. Sure, yeah. So, so what is acceptable wobble zone for you? I hear a lot of people talk about that, and I just want this to be really brief. Um, briefly, what is wobble, acceptable wobble zone for you? Right, acceptable wobble zone for me is is about a quarter of the target size. Okay, That's does that make sense? Yep, it does. If sure I can does. make it zero wobble, I'm I'm good with that. Yeah, everybody's happy with that. Yeah, but you know I'm I'm getting older and Parkinson's is setting in, so I'm like, <laughs> you know. anyway. So that's that's my goal. So okay. are we recording on the on the trigger cam? We are now. I'll go ahead and load up. And what we have is we've got kind of the typical, it's a it's a 12 inch circle at 400 yards. It's kind of your PRS. That's about average right. target size. Okay. For a barricade, right? Right. Okay, so here we go. Attach myself to the rifle. Okay, I'm on target. Okay, my wobble zone is way less than a quarter. Okay, I actually saw that one. I held left wind and I didn't need to. So here we go. Hold center, there we go. Okay, I was actually able to see the trace of the bullet. Today's and, a good day, I think, for that. Right, it's, it's super bright, and I was actually able to see it. It just didn't bend the way I wanted to, so I held left edge, because mm -hmm. I saw a little barrage going left to right, and it just didn't happen for okay. me, so. But I was able to see it and make a correction. Okay. That's the goal. Right. Okay. All right, let's uh, try with a couple other cartridges. Try a, try a little bit bigger cartridge. A little, a little bit bigger. Yeah, here we go. 
All right, so we got everything switched over. The trigger cams on this one, and this is what do we have? This, this is a this is a six five PRC, and it's in that it's the it's my going to be my hunting rifle. So it's a it's a twelve sub twelve pound rifle. Yeah. So this is going to be this is going to be a little bit more of a handful. I'm going to have to probably give up a little bit of zero wobble just to be able to manage recoil a little bit better and be able to catch the rifle because it's gonna it's gonna want to hop around a little bit more okay all right let's okay. see it okay so it looked like the target kind of turned to the right a little bit so i'm going to give it just a little bit of left and that's about a quarter plate wobble okay not bad that was pretty centered up okay as you can see, it's it's a little livelier. Yeah. A little, little bit. <laughs> okay, we'll switch the trigger cam over to um, the 300 wind mag. Okay. Yep. Let's do it. And then we'll try that guy. <laughs> yeah. That's going to be a little bit more lively yet. So that's pretty big. <laughs> that's really big. Just the, bu <laughs> it's, the it's bullet. It's ridiculous, isn't it? And this is uh, this is about a 13 and a half pound gun. So this so, one's gonna yeah, here you kick go. Check it out. real good. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's pretty light. <laughs> I could throw it. <laughs> yeah. I won't, I promise. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, this is gonna be a handful. Yeah. All right, so now we've got the 375 Ruger, which is the biggest rifle that you've brought, or biggest cartridge that you've brought out today, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. It's the biggest one I own, yeah. Okay, all right, so this one, and how much does this one way this, this rifle this rifle as is weighs about 13 and a half pounds 14 okay pounds. so so the weight is similar to the 6.5 prc but the cartridge is just prop like what twice that size it's double double yeah okay. so yeah. that's 140s at 2850 this is 260s at 2850 so i'm not I'm 260 not good at math, but that's, that's a lot of power it's 120 grains more so with this um i long story longer um when i did go to africa this year i got to shoot a 375 and I, I basically killed everything with it i didn't get my gun in and the guy had let me use his and i, I was sold on it right. i mean it just yeah it absolutely thumped stuff like nobody's business good um and this is uh 260 grain acubon so okay. pretty neat bullet it's about the same ballistics as a 308 okay Oh, okay. All right. All right. So, so let's see you do it, and then when you're done, I I want to give it a go. Okay. All right. All right. Here we go. All right. We're kind of set up, level. Yeah, that was pretty good. I I broke that a little left, but it looked like it's still connected, pretty centered up. Here we go. A little bit low okay but i was still able to see where it went okay okay all right so i feel like you know for what i shoot uh six five creedmoor and and uh six creedmoor i i feel like my recoil management's pretty all right but we're gonna this i don't think i've shot a cartridge this big so we're gonna see how how i do with my recoil management okay list. and uh and the trigger trigger is about three and a half pounds. So, and we were shooting at were you shooting at P one? No, I was shooting at the uh, the four hundred yard target. The circle just left the P P one or P three. No, it's out there floating. No, P one, babe. Yep. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go. All right, so I feel like that that kicked me pretty good, but I was able to come back. Like I feel like the the recoil for that was straight up, and then I resettled right back where I was. And you were able to see and it. I was able to sit. Uh, I I just missed it. I think okay. with a few more a few, a few more, more rounds trimes, and get yeah. used to it, yeah. I'd be able to do yeah. it. But it's pretty that, lively, isn't it? it it's it's it, you know it wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. Right. Which is good. Um, but it, but it was still, still pretty lively. I, 
I don't know. I don't know how many rounds I could go on that one. <laughs> I think when when I when I first started shooting this out here, it was um, I think I did 60 rounds to break it in, and I was like, I didn't really want to touch it again for about a month. <laughs> yeah, that that wasn't so bad. I was worried. I was a little bit worried. Oh but yeah. No, it yeah. wasn't so bad. It, it's hard for me not to want to go hunting with this, just because I know what. I mean, I, I can. It gives you some forgiveness. So. Um, on the hunting side of the house, you know, you're, we talk about ethics, we talk about, you know, shot placement, shot placement trumps energy, Absolutely. but then again, something like this gives you some forgiveness. You can leak the round into the shoulder or you can leak it back into the, and, and it's just going to wreck whatever you shoot. So, um, it's hard for me not to want to, like I said, go elk hunting with this just cause I know it's going to do it. It's, it's gonna do what you. <laughs> it's gonna want kill it to anything do. I shoot with it. Yeah. Yep. All right. Cool. Cool. Thanks right. a lot. Yeah, man. Okay, so there you have it. Um, as you can see, this video was filmed um, way back in January. Um, we're all dressed up in cold weather gear, and I decided to come back to this video to revisit recoil management and see what. Scott was doing. I have been um, struggling a little bit with my recoil management lately, um, and I, you know, I'm not really sure why. It's just one of those things that sometimes happens. You know, um, I've been shooting competitively at a national level for a little over three years now, and recently I just noticed that my recoil management is not as good as it used to be. So I wanted to go back and watch some of what Scott had taught us and what we went over earlier in the year. Um, <clears throat> you can see that there is a big difference between, you know, a heavy competition rifle versus a um, large cartridge, lightweight hunting rifle. And the recoil management and the way that you approach it um, is a lot different. Uh, I still shoot six Creedmoor. Um, I shoot a couple of other cartridges as well. And um, recently, uh, for my hunting gun, I have been using 6.5 Creedmoor in a lighter chassis, and um, I just have really wanted to work on my recoil management. As you can see in the video, when I shot that 375 Ruger, um, I, what I thought I saw in the moment when I pulled the trigger um, was not actually what happened. And when you go back and you look at the video, you can see everything that happened and how long it took to for all of that to happen. So I shot, I thought truly that I got right back on the rifle um, and then I resettled everything and I just missed the impact on that target that I was shooting at. But um, when you look at the footage, it shows that it, you know, the recoil was much more than what I thought and much more than what my brain was able to process in that moment. Your brain um, is using a lot of processing power. You know, you're thinking about the, the recoil, you're thinking about getting back on target. Um, you know, what's that loud noise, the percussion, like your brain is processing all of that. And your brain only has so much processing power to do that. Whereas the trigger cam, which is a wonderful training tool, video is such an excellent training tool. It doesn't lie. It is what it is. Um, the trigger cam showed that I came off way more than I thought that I did. Now I did resettle. I was able to see the splash of the impact, um, but it wasn't as fast as I thought that it was initially. So Recoil management really takes a lot of uh, time and you have to practice a lot to train your brain uh, to be able to see what is happening through all of the, you know, the trigger press and the recoil and the percussion. Um, it really just takes a lot of time and practice to be able to get to see the splash if you miss or the splash um, of the impact when you're shooting. So. Um, I hope that this video helps you guys out a lot. Um, again, revisiting this for me was pretty helpful. I'm going to go back and employ some of the stuff that Scott talks about in the video. <clears throat> 
and um, you know just get back to work on training. So if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Um, let us know what you do, and if you like our videos, please make sure that you like, subscribe, and share. We really appreciate all the growth and um, the wonderful community that has been supporting us. Thanks for watching.